this first episode, I have selected a range of tools allowing you to dive into this exciting world. First of all, the rudiments. What you see here is the cylinder, commonly known as a hard metal or carbide black. Most of the tools produced on our machines are made of hard metal because of its excellent wear resistance and hardness. Cemented carbide consists of about 90% of tungsten carbide and around 10% of cobalt. Understanding its composition helps in determining the appropriate grinding parameters without going into the details of materials, which we will discuss in the next episode. The important fact to know at the moment is that hard metal can only be ground by diamond wheels due to the hardness of the material. There are also blanks with coolant holes. This allows the flow of cooling fluid, which can cool the tool, lubricate the machined area, or facilitate the removal of chips during machining. The blank here has not yet undergone any specific grinding operation. It has been cut to a fixed length and has a chamfer, the flat surface that you can see here, that has been added to break the edge of the blank. In most cases, the first operation performed on this blank is a preparation, which we can see here. In other words, the removal of material to prepare the blank for its final design by reducing its diameter over a specified length. For this operation, we will use a cylindrical grinding operation with grinding wheels, which you can see here. This can be done on a dedicated cylindrical grinding machine, like our ShipSmart machines, or directly on the tool grinding machine, like our GrindSmart 660XW that you see behind me. To realize the cutting part of the tool, we use differently shaped grinding wheels on a 5 or 6 axis grinding machine to perform several operations of material removal in a precise order and thus define the geometry of the tool that we want to produce. Here we can see several drills, tools that are used to make holes. We can change the parameters of our grinding operations and thus give another shape to our drill, which will change its performance drilling in different materials. These drills can be short, but also very long, as we can see with those two over there. A drill can be designed to make several hole diameters in one go, by using steps, of we see an example over here. One of the important features is the flute. This is what you can see on this plastic tool. This feature forms the cutting edge and gives you the needed space to properly eject the ships, the material that will be removed by the point or the tip of the tool. A fundamental characteristic of the flute is the helix angle. The helix angle is the angle you have between the axis, respectively, the center line of the tool and a straight line tangent to the cutting edge, like the drawing you can see next to me. A small helix angle will result in little axial ship evacuation, and a large helix angle helps more actively to evacuate the chips, but will also have more contact with the material and therefore more friction and heat generation. The helix angle depends on the material to drill and the type of hole that we need. Another type of tool that is often encountered is the end mill. For the non-initiated, it's going to be complicated to tell the difference between these two tool types. However, the one you see here is not made to make holes, but to mill. End mills are essential cutting tools in the manufacturing industry, and are used in a wide range of applications, including aerospace, automotive, and medical devices. A drill cuts material only with the point of the tool, but an end mill can cut material with its side as well as the tip of the tool and have one or several cutting edges, depending on the material to cut and the required surface finish. There are many different types of end mills, each with its own unique design and cutting characteristics. The common shapes are known as bullnose end mill, which have a rounded end that is ideal for creating curved surfaces, square end mills, which have a flat end that is suitable for cutting slots or straight edges. Chamfer end mills, like square end, but with a chamfer on it, that reduces the wear on the edge of the tool and makes it more suitable for large volume removal. And corner radius end mills, which are very versatile because they can be used for slots, straight edges and curved shapes. Here are all the versions side by side. Each operation can be different and thus specificities can be added. Typically, you see end mills with two flutes or with four flutes. Remember about the flutes? Two flutes, the two I'm holding here, 
is used for machining rather soft materials, like aluminium. The end mill with more fluids like this one is used for machining harder materials. In the end, it all depends on the application you're going to make. All these tools we see here on the table can be of different sizes. Here's a 16 mm end mill, used mainly in the machining of parts in the automotive, industrial or aerospace industries. That special color you see on the cutting edge is a coating. This coating is a tiny layer that has been applied to the tool, providing a number of advantages, such as longer tool life, improved machining performance, less heat buildup and better chip extraction. The chips slide more easily through the flute. Tools can be of different diameters, such as those which are really small and this one which is a lot bigger in diameter. In some applications there is need for extremely small diameters. Here's an example of a drill with a diameter of 0.05 mm, corresponding to a little less than the diameter of a hair. Here's an example of what it looks like if you take a microscope image. Rotomatic has a strong reputation to build machines best adapted to the production of microtools. Over the years, we have developed not only machine technology, but also everything surrounding the machine, including the grinding process, to be able to manufacture tools smaller than 3 mm, with the highest precision and repeatability. Although we also offer solutions for the grinding of larger diameters, and feel just as comfortable helping our customers to grind tools with a shank diameter up to 32 mm. There is no limit to the complexity of tool design. Here we can see form tool designs, used for very specific applications. So we covered the two most widespread tool types, but there are many other cylindrical cutting tools that you can encounter in the tool grinding business. Here we can see a reamer. Tools that allow, after having drilled a pre-hole, to machine a hole of great geometric precision with an excellent surface finish. Here we can find tabs which will machine the thread inside the hole that has been made. One of the purposes is then to be able to screw something in. Another group of tools stands out a bit, those intended for the medical and dental view. Why? Because often these tools are made of medical stainless steel. As explained before, we will discuss the different types of materials in a future episode. But grinding of steel is done with another type of grinding wheels. Here are some applications that can be realized. We can see tools that are used in the dental field, like the drill or burrs. These tools are specifically used for treatments in the oral area. Other tools, like the ones you can see here, are dedicated to surgical applications. Blades, long drill or burrs. It's spine chilling when you imagine what it can do, but also great to know lives are improved and even saved with the help of these tools. Let's move on to another group that is just as interesting as carbide and steel tools. Let's talk about the tools you can see here. These are the ultra hard tool category. PCD, PCBN, CVD, MCD are some of the different materials you can machine. However, it's very difficult to do this with a traditional grinding machine. It's better to use a technology that has proven itself for over 10 years now, laser machining. We will also come back to this in a future episode. Here is an example of a tool machined by laser. You can see the part here that looks like a plate. It is this one that will be shaped by the laser. The tools produced on our laser machines can be diametrically different. The first tool will be intended for the removal of materials for the automotive field, for example, and the last one will be useful for the woodworking industry. These are the biggest tools that Rolomatic can provide solutions for at this time. Let's move on to the last category I want to talk about in this episode, the domain of inserts. I can tell you that it's not in two minutes that we'll be able to go around the subject. Let's make a brief introduction. An insert at Rollomatic is considered as a non-cylindrical cutting tool. The process is a bit different. There are several families, and here you can see some examples showing the main ones. These different inserts are then screwed onto a tool holder and perform the material removal work. The user of this kind of tool can then change only the inserts without changing the entire tool. Companies also use inserts for cost and material saving reasons. Changing worn inserts is preferable to changing a whole tool. Clamping an insert in a rollomatic machine is not the same as a cylindrical tool. In the second case, a standard collet is used to clamp the cylindrical blank, 
Or in the case of inserts, special accessories are used to clamp the tool during the machining. We will come back to this subject in a future episode. We have now come to the end of the first episode. Of course, there are many other types of tools that are quite different each from each other. Nevertheless, this has given you an overview of the most popular tools that we produce on our grinding machines. In our next episode, we will look at the different materials that these cutting tools are made of and which also defines our development of the machine which will machine them. Although tungsten carbide is the most common material for the production of milling and drilling tools in large quantities, many other materials and alloys are used for the production of tools, with very different characteristics. We will also take the opportunity to introduce the topic of coating, which allows to go even further into detail about the possibilities of manufacturing with coatings on the tools. Feel free to follow the next topics that will be covered in our Essential series. See you soon! Thank you.